okay so welcome back to another video in today's video we have the following question that's actually represented as a um, ODE question so it's stated as let y equals the infinite sum of y 2n divided by 2 to the power n where y is a function in terms of x and y to some n denotes the nth derivative of y solve for the explicit form of y given that uh, y sub 0 is equal to 3000 and y prime of 0 is equal to 7000 so of course you see with the initial conditions and then the functions we want to find explicit form hence this is a uh, ODE ordinary differential equations problem there's actually two ways to solve this and I'm actually going to show those two ways and it, an interesting thing is that when solving those two ways after completing the um, I'll say the big first step to both ways it leads to the second second bigger step which eventually that will um, that will eventually we will need the given conditions of um, these two right here as follows so how I'm gonna do this is basically we have our given function write this in a way to re-index the sum and then form into some um, differential equation to the point where eventually once we have a general solution to solve those unknown constants is where we can actually use these initial conditions so other than that let's actually just jump in so I'm gonna do the first method first then go to the second method then um, really the two methods of doing the first big step then after completing those then we'll jump right into the second uh, big step um, allowing us to use these initial conditions so uh, first thing that we want to say is um, we let y equals our function over here so um, in other words let's actually let me just write this again so y is equal to the infinite sum of uh, y to the 2 nth uh, prime we'll say that because this is the nth derivative so it's the 2 nth derivative of 2 to the power n so let's say if uh, what we can do is let's actually take um, dif let's differentiate both sides so we're taking the derivative twice to both sides so we have that y and then I'll denote this as uh, 2 so this is supposed to be um, act as y prime and so that equals 2 so this is in respect when really you just have to add 2 since 2n is a derivative so you add 2 since you're doing it um, taking the derivative twice so it's just add add towards that so here we have n is equal 1 then y to the power 2n plus 2 then divided by uh, 2 to the power n okay so with that now let's actually multiply one half to both sides so we have y to the uh, y double prime divided by 2 then equals so this is still the infinite sum numerator hasn't changed but what changes that we add oh, um, multiply 2 to the denominator so that means we can add 1 add plus 1 to the exponent so here that way we have uh, 2 to the power n plus 1 okay so now the big trick is we want to rewrite our um, this infinite sum over here it's all about just uh, re-indexing so in other words what I can say is that um, I'm gonna write this in the next line so here hold on one sec I need to rewrite that um, infinite symbol all right, so here we have uh, y to the two, um, 2n plus 2 uh, derivative and 2n plus 1. So in other words, if we were to re-index uh, re our infinite sum over here, so what we get that we're going to actually um, start our index as um, n is equal to 2. So what changes here is that the numerator will be y of um, the, two, the 2n prime or 2n derivative and then divided by this will just be uh, 2 to the power n. So we can actually continue writing this even further. So now um, y to the 2n um, then divided by 2n. So here's this. What's neat is, okay, so let me actually switch to a different marker so you see what's going on here. So if I'm going to rewrite that same infinite prime again where n is equal to 2, let's actually um, start with the beginning and re-index back, re back to um, n is equal to 1. Okay, so n is equal to 1 of the same thing. 2n, hold on, let me fix that again. It looks like I'm writing that as a function instead of 2n then divided by uh, 2 to the power n. If I write it like this, then in other words, if I expand that term out, this is basically, this starts at the, um, the n is equal to 2 index. So that implies that I have to evaluate what n is equal to 1. In other words, if I do this, so I put 1 back into here. So this is y is um, this, this y double prime, then divided by 2, and then add this with um, over here. So this is the infinite sum 
n is equal to uh, 2, then um, write back the sum again, then divide it by 2n. So what that entails is that if I uh, subtract both sides, I get this inequality, this equality, not inequality, equality. Okay, so doing this, now we have that um, going back. So n is equal to of y then to the 2n derivative, then 2 to the power n, that's equal to this uh, sum over here. So n is equal 1. And then we subtract this, and we're subtracting both sides. So 2, then 2 to the n. Okay, so now what we showed is that if starting from this left-hand side, we re, um, we actually just, um, starting from here, we multiply by uh, 1 half. That gives us this expression. Then we rewrite this expression even further to re-index that sum. Um, then going back to here, we just subtract the y to the uh, double prime divided by 2n. So that entails that this um, y to the um, double prime divided by 2 is equal to the infinite sum of y to the 2nth derivative divided by 2n. Then subtract um, y to y double prime of um, 2 to the power n. Okay, so now just going back, now we can rewrite and say that um, y to the um, second derivative, then divided by 2, that's coming from over here. Then we can set that this is equal to this right-hand side expression over here. So uh, let's see, yep, infinite sum, n is equal to um, 1, 2 to the power n, then subtract uh, y double prime then 2 divided by, well actually, what am I saying, this is actually, there's no, there's no n over here, so, okay, there we go, minor, minor mistake, no worries. So we have this, and now um, notice that we said that um, given that y is equal to this infinite sum right here, so over here we can just replace this back for y, so in other words this is um, divided by uh, 2, then equals y, simply this is given from over here, I'll state that again one more time, then subtract with y2 um, and then divide it by 2. And now next what I can do is just add um, y double prime divided by 2 to both sides and subtract y, and so we actually end up with what's known as, um, well first let me write this down, so we have y double prime, or I'll write this as uh, two hashes, then subtract with y, and then that's equal to zero. So here, this is what we have a homogeneous um, linear constant coefficient, uh, second, second order um, ODE. That's a long word to say. <laughs> so let me write that down first before we actually continue further with the process. I'll just write homogeneous, um, just shortened down, and I'll just say second order um, ODE. Um, this is the linear constant coefficient, just um, save some space, but we know we know what it is now. Okay, so that's the first way done. So I was gonna say let's do the second method, so let's actually um, do that. So the second method is actually pretty, pretty interesting here. So what I can do is that we're given the function yet again, so what I can do is let y um, equals e to the, um, how about this, let me put this little I'll just say that's one way showing, so we'll do the other way showing. So let's say we have uh, let y equals e to some, um, we'll call, I'm just gonna call this r and then times x, okay? So if I take um, the derivative of both sides, specifically the 2 nth derivative, then we have um, y then 2n, then that's equal to, so if I take to the 2 n derivative, so basically, this is just, um, you know how di differentiation comes with this, so it's just e to the rx then times the derivative of the exponent, which is just r, so it's r. You keep doing this for the 2 n until you get to the 2 nth derivative, so it's basically just r to the um, 2 n, and then multiply by uh, e to the rx. Okay, so we have that. So let's actually put this back to our uh, substitution over here, our y equals the um, infinite sum over here. So that means we have um, e to the rx, and then that's equal to our infinite sum, n is equal one of, um, so like two n, so I'll just plug this back in, so this is r to the power two n, then multiply with e to the rx, then divide by um, two to the power n. And um, 
E R to the, or excuse me, not um, E to the power R X. It does not depend on N on the sum, so I can actually just factor or move that outside of the sum. So I can just write this as E R X. Then we have our infinite sum, N is equal one of R to N, then divided by uh, two to the power N. So now we can actually just expand this um, series even further. So it's just e to the rx. Then if I expand this series out over here, so we have r squared then divided by two. Add this with r to the power four divided by four. Add this with r to the power six divided by eight. Then the series continues on, so on, so forth. Um, now notice that because e to the rx is um, greater than zero for um, all real numbers of x, it's um, strictly increasing, in other words, we could say that for um, any real number x. We could actually divide e to the rx to both sides. And so um, doing so, we'll equate that we have that the left hand side is just equal to one. And then we just set this um, equal, to, and then the right hand side is just equal to this series expansion. So divided by two plus r divided by four plus r to the power six divided by eight. Okay, so on and so forth. Now next, let's actually add one to both sides of the equation. So if I add one to both sides, so now we have two, then that's equal to one plus, um, then just that same series expansion again, two plus r4, four plus r6, eight, so on and so forth. Okay, now um, notice that this is actually forms a, um, and if this actually comes to a, a little um, geometric series. Um, so let's see, so this is n is equal zero. So we have that the common ratio is just one, and then um, not, not the common ratio, one. a is equal to one, and the common ratio is um, r, squ uh, um, r squared divided by two. So let's see, I'll, I'll, how about I write it like this? I'll write r to the two n, and then we divide this by uh, two n, then write this out, then we have, um, so of course, this is, I said the common ratio was r squared divided by, um, divided by two. So you can actually use the formula saying with that um, common ratio with a is, equal, or a is equal to one. And then we have one divided by one subtract with um, r squared divided by two. Um, that's equal to two for this left hand side over here. But in other words, you can actually write that as two is equal to, um, we'll just multiply two to both the top and bottom. So it's just two divided by um, was it to subtract um, our square and then now um, now just solving the work so you're gonna get that um, let's see so um, well I'll just skip the step you're gonna get that um, R is supposed to equal plus and minus one okay so that completes this but since um, it leads to the um, leads to um, we have our roots so really I kind of just skipped ahead of this uh, what happens is that um, y double prime minus y equals zero. That's, of course, that's a second order um, homogeneous equation. So solving your characteristic equation, you actually just solve for your real roots. So in other words, we have that r square um, here. Let me put it like this. Okay, so you have r square and then minus one equals zero. Then you just solve for your roots. Obviously, you're gonna get that r is equal to plus and minus one, which is exactly just like this. So that actually now completes two of our methods, which means we can actually move to the second big step. In other words, finding our general solution. So we know that um, we know that when solving this um, auxiliary equation, characteristic equation, if you want to put it that way, we get that the general solution we have, even though we haven't solved our constant yet, is equated to y is equal to some constant c1, then multiply with e to the power x, add this with c2 to the power, or multiply with e to the negative x. All right, so here's the general solution right there. So now all we have to do is solve for our constants. That's what are given. Y, sub zero, y of zero is equal to 3,000 and Y prime of zero is equal to 7,000. All right, so let's see. Y sub zero, um, let's see if we plug zero over here. Um, that means this is just one, then that's one. So we have C1 plus C2 and that's set that that's equal to 3,000. Okay, and now the second part is Y prime of zero. We just have to take the derivative of our general solution. So this is C1 derivative of e to the x is just e to the x, so that's fine. Um, then plus C2 times 
derivative of e to the negative x, that's um, negative e to the negative x. So that means we have c1 times e x subtract c2 times e to the negative x, plug zero for both, then we get that this is just c1 subtract c2, set that equal to 7,000. Then what's left is we have a systems of equation that we can solve for our constants. c1 plus c2 equals 3,000. Uh, C1 minus C2 is equal to 7,000. Then you'll notice that if you add the terms together, let's see, the C2 cancels. So we're left with that. Um, we have double the quantity for C1. 2C1 is equal to 10,000. Then just divide by 2. C1 is equal to um, 5,000. Then plug 5,000 back here, then solve for C2. Then you see that C2 is equal to negative 2,000. You can see that same thing over here, 5,000, then minus minus 2,000. So 7,000, 3,000, it works. There we go. The final answer for our general solutions now that we um, solve for our constants is Y is equal to 5,000 um, e to the power X subtract 2,000 um, times e to the negative X, like so. And there we have it. The final answer, our general solution that we've solved with the explicit form of our given function and our given initial conditions like so. So yeah, uh, that's a pretty cool if you ask me.